Today, we are going to continue the theme of biohacking sex with sexpert Susan Bratton. And she's written probably too many books that I can list and has created hundreds of techniques that change having sex into making love. Now, Susan has got a ton of energy and uses it to not only write the books and coach people, but to also to create businesses and that businesses that empower women's sex lives. And she first co-founded Personal Life Media, which is a publisher of heart-connected lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills and sexual regenerative therapies. And then she went on to create The 20, which is which is um, which makes organic and, and botanical supplements that enhance sexual vitality. And we'll have links to all these books and all these supplements and everything in the show notes. Now, Susan is also an active and caring spokesperson for lots of fun sex toys and therapies that increase our sex span. We're going to talk about that as about too. And you may also have seen Susan on US television networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC, or perhaps on one of the many podcasts that she's been invited to. And now she's on the Hack My Age podcast. So without further ado, let's meet Susan Bratton. Welcome. Hi, Zora. And hello, everyone. It's so nice to be here today. Thank you. I'm looking forward to getting into it again with you, Zora. We seem to have an indefatigable appetite for conversa conversation around our libido, desire, arousal around what it's like for midlife women to embrace and expand their sexuality rather than allow it to diminish and why we want to do that. So I'm looking forward to the next hour together. Thank you. Oh, it was a pleasure to have you lecture in my first online program, the Menopause Energy Reboot Program. And you were amazing. And we learned so much. And right. one, one thing, like it was, you just this fabulous video, and then we had this wonderful Q and A. And one thing you really opened our eyes to was, was the fact that we are what I'm called, doing sex like a man. Yeah. And, and anyone who's listened to me for more than a minute knows that mm -hmm. I've interviewed people who tell us that we are exercising like men and dieting like men, ice bathing like men. And we need to yeah. stop <laughs> this nonsense and just start catering to our female selves and you really resonated with me on that. And so tell us what it means to stop sort of doing sex like a man. Sure. Well, I, I often call it um, moving to the matriarchal rather than the patriarchal view of sex or way of sex. And, you know, our, our entire sexual culture has been informed by white male patriarchy, religious repression, the combination of those two things have made the way we have sex, the way we have sex. And I'll give you some very specific examples of that. The male body works differently than the female body with regard to libido, arousal, and desire. I'll, I'll explain a couple of those things because I want to really draw you know, like what it is that is occurring right now for most of us, the way we've had sex almost our whole lives and why it ended up like that and why that's not serving us as women and how we can begin to change the kind of sex we're having so that we're fulfilled and satisfied. We love it. We feel like sexual beings, our sex life fuels and feeds us. It creates more confidence and vitality it reboots our nervous system it calms us down it grounds us it makes us feel more powerful um it re it brings us back to a level of pleasure we may never have even experienced before um it makes us feel safe it makes us feel beautiful it makes us feel treasured it makes us love our bodies and appreciate our bodies it makes us look younger than all of the other people our age which is one of my favorite things about sex <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> um <clears throat> these are all these are all benefits of having great sex and we're not getting it most of us are not getting it i was not getting it the first 42 years of my life until i said this is no good why is it why isn't it good how come it doesn't live up to its you know billing why is it constantly <laughs> failing me why is it good for my husband and not for me why don't i want to have sex with my husband anymore 
Why am I trying to avoid him? Why do I come up with a million excuses? Because it wasn't any good for me because we were doing it like a dude would do it. And we're, we've all been doing that because that's all we see. So for example, there's one thing that men have a real competitive advantage in sexuality in that they're testosterone dominant rather than estrogen dominant. So they feel, they feel horny all the time. They masturbate on a daily basis because they're biologically driven to do it and they've got to keep their sperm fresh to pass on their genes so they just want to do so thinking about sex all the time porn is built for them designed for them to masturbate so they're watching it all the time and even if you don't think they are they are they're watching it they're watching it on their phone in their truck on their lunch break <laughs> they're watching it i see it all the time and you know, to the point now where our young men are addicted to pornography, they've got dopamine dysregulation, they treat young women horribly, like porn stars, it's degrading and demeaning. They think that's what sex is, it's literally only getting worse. And the only way that we can stop it is to do what we've always done throughout history, which is to say, no, this is not going to stand. We are changing this now. We are standing up against what's going on here. It's not right. It's not serving us. If you want mama to be happy, she ain't happy. They also get erections really fast. We get erections really slowly. We have we never even achieve our erectile function before we're penetrated. And bring in the old religious repression, which says the only thing that sex is good for is procreation. So the only thing that sex is intercourse. Well, intercourse feels good for a guy the minute he's erect. But because it takes us so much longer, we hardly have ever even had intercourse that's satisfying because we're rushed to sex all the time. By that, I mean, we're rushed to intercourse. And we miss the things that are categorized as something not important for play, what you do to get to sex which are the things that help us build our arousal, get our desire, get out of our brains and into our bodies. Let us slow down and relax and connect. And, and most of the men that we've had sex with have not connected their penis to their heart. They're doing what I call friction instead of connection. They're just rubbing two sticks together to make the fire. And it's not good for us. It's terrible for us. And you wonder why we're left thinking, well, I could take it or leave it. By the time you get into midlife, you're like, I don't care if I ever have sex again. It's never been good for me. Like maybe one time with that one hot guy when I was 27 years old, I had that <laughs> one thing. And I had this, you know, kind of like insight into, oh, somebody is getting sex better than I am on a regular. Okay, but it's definitely not been happening for me. Add to that the fact that women struggle to achieve orgasm from intercourse because we're rushed all the time because we're not taught about our anatomy because we're shy about our genitals because estrogen gives us body image issues and we're just working against an uphill climb that seems so daunting that often in midlife we just give up and this is when we need to actually switch it around and start to get what we need because we just we, we have to take what we need in our lives in midlife. This is when we be, move into that crone stage where we are like, yeah, I don't really care if you like what I'm saying or not. This is what I'm going to tell you. You know, you get that <laughs> confidence. You get a little higher testosterone to estrogen ratio. Um, you just, you get wisdom. You get experience you get knowledge and you get confidence from being alive as long as we've been alive where you don't want to put up with crap anymore and this can if you're lucky and you're like oh you mean it's not me i'm not broken oh you mean i can have orgasms from intercourse if the conditions were right well, all women can i've been having intercourse with my husband for 20 years or longer and he has orgasms every time and i don't and i'm still stuck using my vibrator when we're done and it's like, yes, you can have this. This is available to you. And I think there are just a couple of things that we have to understand about ourselves. And that is that we have a 20 to 30 minute turn on period where we're not spontaneously horny, where we respond to 
signals and bids for affection and intimacy that we really do need intimacy, very warm, loving. We need encouragement. We need adoration. We need verbal encouragement, words of appreciation from our male body partners who are men of few words. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes it even tougher, but we've got to ask for it. One of the things that I often teach people is a little game called three things I love about you. And I notice that I need that. I mean, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm such a super strong woman. I mean, I'm just, I've always been a confident woman. I think I've always had a fair amount of testosterone and because I work out every day, I've got a lot of testosterone. And I've also been doing that Vasper um, bike oh, yeah. kind of Nordic track thing recently, uh, three times a week to rebuild my strength from some injuries that I've had and a facelift. I talked to you about that on the on the other um, the segment that we did. And um, it creates an endocrine cascade of growth hormone and testosterone. So it's even higher now. So I'm just like so much more confident in my older age, but not everybody is. And I have to remember that I can say, here's the things you need to kind of demand, you know, but <laughs> not everybody, <laughs> not everybody's willing to do it. So when I talk about it and I'm like, here's what you need to do, rah, 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 you have to do it in your own way. But I'm kind of like that fierce little schnauzer dog, you know, nipping at your heels to encourage you to stand for the way your body works and the things that you need in your sex life, because it's not what you need. It's not, you're not different. You are like the rest of us. We're all the same. I mean, of course, in sexuality, there's a big bell curve and there's some people on one end and some people on the other, but the great middle of the bell curve, we women, our bodies work a certain way. And we take it on as like, there's something wrong with me because I'm not, you know, because I'm not always running around horny like my husband or, you know, he gets mad at me because I never initiate. I say to guys, she's never going to initiate. And if she did, you would not even be able to read her signal. She'd be thinking she's blasting loud and clear to you that she wants you to make a move and you whoo, just whoo, goes completely. So you got to initiate for your woman. Take that weight off her shoulders. She's got enough to do. Help her turn around, come back, hold her by the hand and get her going. Give her hugs, touch her body, stroke her hair, tell her you love her, tell her three things she lo you love about her. We need the, like, we just need the encouragement and the safety because estrogen is prey. And testosterone is the predator. Predators, men are men aren't running around worried for their safety. They don't even think about this. They're they're safe wherever they go. They're safe. We're unsafe everywhere we go. People are trying to take advantage of us our whole lives. And so no wonder we're not spontaneously horny. We need to be, we're willing. We like sex if it's good for us, but we're not the horn dog in the relationship and so when our part when we teach our partners that we're different than they are because they don't know they're just doing to us what they want us to do to them they're running the golden rule Te treat your partner the way you want to be treated well he wants you to grab his butt and grab his package and stick your tongue down his throat and be horny all the time and objectify you and all, <laughs> all <this laughs> stuff that he wants but that's not what we want and he just doesn't know. So I do bring a giant dollop of um, understanding that it's not men's fault, but that we need to train them. And they hate it when we say we're training them. So that's just between us women. But we <laughs> got to be training them all the time because they're basically barbarians, horny barbarians. <laughs> and we have to live with them. And we need horny barbarians. We need them. Uh, well, I, at least I do. We just I need, need them trained. <laughs> I need a trained horny barbarian. <laughs> and one of the things that I notice is that though I love to hear words of appreciation and adoration throughout the day at any moment, I really need them when I start moving into a lovemaking date. I feel insecure at the beginning of the date and hearing why I'm beautiful, why I'm desired why I'm smart, why I'm amazing, why I'm special, 
what I've done right lately, it really begins to grease the skids for my lubrication and my relaxation. That's the other and really second piece of this is that, and so ask, what do you love about me? What do you adore about me? What do you think are the prettiest things about me? Ask. If you want to know, ask. And they will not be very good at it at first. They'll be like, you're really pretty. You know, <laughs> you, feel, you feel good to me. I like the way your butt looks, you know, like start there. You can always say, can you give me more, a little more about that? Can you put a little flesh on those bones for me? Just a couple <laughs> more words. Like you have to pull it out of them. But in the training, they get better and better at it. Then suddenly one day they're going to be like, you know, I want to tell you three things about that I love about you. And I've got a bonus one today. All of a sudden <laughs> they're like, they love doing it once they learn how to do it because they realize that that appreciation and adoration is so huge. So the second piece is, that because he's instantly horny and ready to go, he doesn't understand that you're not. And he doesn't understand that you have as much erectile tissue in your vulva as he does in his penis, but that it's got a lot of nooks and crannies and it just takes a while for the blood to fill in and flow in so that you expand your vulva. It gets, gets what's called engorged. And when it's engorged, it has more surface area that feels better when it's touched and sends more pleasure signals to your brain, which is your number one sex organ. And if you're rushed and it doesn't happen and you don't feel turned on, then you have sex that is like basically flaccid, not erect sex, which is not pleasurable. And you don't get the lubrication that you need. So women struggle with dryness. Um, the, the lubrication comes from your blood rushing to your pelvic bowl and seeping through your vaginal mucosal lining and wetting it, but it can't get there if you don't have the slow warm up first. Um, for a lot of guys, because they're ready to go, they're grabbing our lady parts right away. And the problem with that is that we need to be relaxed first before we can climb the arousal ladder. We need to know we're safe and desired. So the verbal appreciation and the full body hugs, the stroking of the hair, the looking in the eyes, the gentle kisses on our cheeks and neck, the full strokes along our body to calm us, um, foot rubs, all of these kinds of things are the things that are the beginning for us of the letdown. Um, even being able to talk things out and let things off our chest first. A lot of times foreplay for me is rub pain cream on whatever I've hurt recently. <laughs> <laughs> Gentle Literally, massage. I, I start my sex dates with pain cream. <laughs> <laughs> and there ain't nothing wrong with that. And I use THC pain cream because I can get that here in California. And mm -hmm. the topical THC, I just just broke, I just ripped both my ACL skiing in Montana. And so my sex starts now with pain cream on my knees and then um, me just getting off my chest, whatever I need to get off my chest, talking and conversation, connecting, dropping in together, kind of just checking in with each other. And when you find that you get things off your chest, even if a tear like kind of waters your eye because you're letting something go that's been upsetting you, it's clearing the way for pleasure because that tear is actually a letdown that begins the process of your spit running and the lubrication going to your vulva. They're all in a system, a locked system. Next thing that's really good to do for arousal for women is to have breast pleasuring. And if you don't love your breasts, really spend more time with breast pleasuring because your breasts, no matter what they look like, mine are flappy patties and I don't care. <laughs> they are really wonderful at stimulating the internal clitoral structures to begin filling with blood. So you'll start to begin to create new neural pathways to your brain by having your breast pleasure, breasts pleasured, and that will help you be, become more turned on as you get used to them being fondled, as you teach your partner how you like them to be touched. And they want to be touched different ways every day. Sometimes they feel good to be squeezed. Sometimes it's just the barest touch of the nipple. And so learning how to communicate your needs is the other piece of really stepping into your power as a sexual being. And in that particular case, uh, I have a download for you. It'll be faster if I just give this to you than if I go through it all here, because I know you want to talk about a number of things. 
Um, but I think it's really important to start with like, how does, how do my, how does my lady body get turned on? Right. <laughs> what are the things I need my partner to do? So the sexual soulmate pact, P-A-C-T, like an agreement. I think I've given that to your, your fans before Zora. <clears throat> That's a download that is just, how do you know what you want? What's the practice? Because a lot of women are like, I don't know what I want. I'm, I just know what I'm getting in it. Well, you do know what you want and it's understanding your felt sense. It's not intuition, but it's kind of the sister of intuition. It's your proprioceptive and felt sense in your body. And it's a skill you hone. And as you begin to really listen to your body, she's talking to you all the time. So it's really about you beginning to hear her. And once you begin to hear her and you've got the confidence to say, what I really need is for you to rub pain cream into my knee first. What I really want is super soft, delicate touch of my yoni when you massage my yoni. And yoni is a Sanskrit word for female genitals, Y-O-N-I. I think it's a prettier word than vulva. <laughs> <laughs> And vulva is really just the outside, not the inside. And what I like to do is I like to think about the whole female urogenital system with the three erectile tissue networks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all as one thing. So I just call that my little yoni, <laughs> although mine's giant, and <laughs> which is not bad either. I mean, I have a giant vagina and flap, floppy boobs, but I've got incredible, incredible sex. And my husband still thinks I am freaking gorgeous that's the other thing about testosterone it has rose colored goggles it does not see the imperfections because estrogen is the judgy molecule it makes us hard on ourselves because it has to keep us safe so it has to be super judgmental and it has to it's got this reticular activation system that's always out looking for danger because we're prey you have to kind of get out of that stuff and you've got to have a mindfulness practice of tuning into your body and connecting your heart with your partner and those are simply learned skills the tuning in and listening and then speaking up for yourself and asking for what will feel good in every moment in the book sexual soulmate pact it's a little ebook it's just a little technique one of my best i really think because communication is the foundation of great sex <clears throat> it explains how, this ninja way that you can get around the issue with male body partners where if you give them feedback they take it as failure and they're like Ugh, uh, you know they act all like retards when you <laughs> tell them something you know and sorry I, I don't even think that word's politically correct anymore <laughs> I need a better one. I apologize for that. You can edit that part out. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> We're always all, all getting better at our communication and our inclusivity of everyone, aren't we? Um, which is good. So these are practices. Communication is a skill of practice. And I just modeled that. <laughs> so yeah, it's just really getting, getting your partner to be like super hungry for your feedback so they can give you the pleasure they've always been dying to give you. And then allowing yourself to get the yoni massage, the oral pleasuring, incorporating toys, getting yourself warmed up, having orgasms, however you want to have orgasms, whatever way you want to get them done in the moment where they're just happy, you're having orgasms. Um, when you can get to that level of comfort with yourself, know your body and your partner is just happy. You guys are both having super large amounts of fun being naked together that's a real it's a it's a real accomplishment and it's an accomplishment that comes from people who are a committed to their sexuality and do want it to be great and understand that making a baby you can do without anybody really telling you what to do but learning how to transform having sex into making love learning how to have heart connected conscious awake and aware communicative participative equally pleasurable love making that is something you learn how to do with practice and that's why i've been writing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of love making techniques over the last 20 years because i think that that's that's why we're here to learn what we need to do and i think understanding that our bodies are so different and giving ourselves the the time to get turned on because once we get turned on, we can really enjoy ourselves. But we, if we never get there, then we're wondering why we want to even bother with sex. And yeah. it can be incredible. Wow. You just 
shared so much out there. And, and I think hope people were taking notes, but I think now you can understand why I really wanted her to talk you to talk about doing sex like a man. And when you opened this box, I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> I didn't never thought about it that I way. I, that's what I wonder. I, I appreciate your reaction to it because yeah, that's how it feels for me. It's like, okay, now I know what the matriarchal way of having sex is. It's slow, it's connected, it's adoring, it's encouraging, it's safe, it's, you know, pleasurable, sensual, it's aware, it's communicative, it's not rushed. It's, you know, like when you think about it, th that that's what the female body needs. And I'll tell you, men want to give us what we want. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that it, it's, sounding good to you yeah and it does and you've given us an explanation it's so some of us and like you said there's a this is there's a spectrum here you know we're talking about not everyone's feeling like this but I think there are uh there is a group out there a big group who do feel like this and who this will resonate with and then you you really make us feel like we're not broken there's nothing wrong with us or it's not you know, we've lost all our hormones and like, that's the way it's going to be. And, yeah. and we have to give up these days, especially for people who've been in long marriages, because you don't have that novelty, uh, or you should be creating this. And, and since you spoke in this, in our online program, there's been a lot of chatter about sex and what to do and right. sharing and right. like, oh my God. And, and I was, you were absolutely right. I started bringing in these techniques of their slow, I, you know, I tell my husband, well, you know what Susan said, <laughs> like, we got to slow down here. And it's amazing how much that transforms. And for me personally, yeah, that, that is, we, I do need more time, you know, sorry. Um, like we're not going to rush into this, but it is more fun. And I, and I, so really what you've just said, I've practiced it and I've seen this result and, and it's so much more fun. And it actually is a new beginning where you just explore your body, explore yourselves. Ever since I, I had my first uh, sex expert, Kim and Ami, on the show, I've been on the hunt looking for other experts in, in sex and sexuality and intimacy. And there's so much out there, especially if you've been raising kids or in your career and not much time and not thinking about yourself and not making sex a priority because what that's just let that one go and like you said maybe it's just been the same thing over and over and over again no there's a whole world out there and i do encourage women to this is just one podcast there's many more that i've done there's many more that other people have done and there's so much out there i really am excited about this new new chapter in in sex and, and my personal sex life. I think it's really, really cool. And I don't think my husband has anything against it <laughs> other than, you know, oh, okay, we're going to slow down. So, you know, we're just changing. Luckily, I have a, a partner who is is open to that and is okay. You have, yeah, what I was going to say is you've coached a lot of people. And, and what I was saying is I'm wondering how much resistance do you think in in your experience do men have to a woman saying wait a second hold on let's change things a bit we're gonna go a little slower we're gonna do little things my way now yeah so first of all i don't coach anyone i don't do any one-on-one -on -one. i'm not a therapist or a psychologist i'm an author of passionate lovemaking technique i have uh as a as a hypersensitive person i have an incredible felt sense and I have um, a real interest in creating wildly delicious sensual experiences. <clears throat> it's kind of making up for the lost time of the first 40 years of my life, not having sex that was satisfying. So it's my, my passion. My passion is passion. How do I create this kind of passionate lovemaking that I feel that that's that as a female we, we crave so much and that once men get a taste of it they're also like oh yeah this is so much better than the thing we were doing before because number one she's happy and number two it connects me to my heart which i really hadn't realized was gone missing so when what i find is that the only way i can judge how the only way I can judge the impact of my work is through the emails and DMs of people asking me questions, me giving them ideas of what to do, them going away and trying them, and then coming back to me and letting me know how they did. And because I've been doing that for two decades, I mean, even before you could slide into DMs, I was just answering 
and giving away sex advice for free. Um, before my PR firm changed my title to intimacy expert to millions, I used to call myself the trusted hot sex advisor to millions. I was trying to help women and their male body partners have hot sex, the kind of sex that was like really fun, exciting, and ignited the passion between them, rather than something that you felt like you had to drag your butt to the bedroom to do, <laughs> <laughs> because that's what had happened in my marriage. And so because I've been able to help thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people over the years with their most the most intimate details of their life, just over email conversations and sending them off to try things, I've gotten a good idea of what works and what doesn't. And that's why that sexual soulmate pact, the technique that helps you partner um, take asking for, not as he's doing something wrong, but instead what the information he needs to do an incredible job, which is his goal. His goal is to do an incredible job for you. That is his intention. He will give up his, his pleasure for your pleasure. He wants you to love sex. He wants you to be horny, turned on by him. He wants you to have incredible orgasms. That, that is his desire. And I know that deep inside, if he can overcome that momentary kind of like contraction around failure um, and you desensitize him to that feeling through the reassurance of the technique and then it starts working for him and he sees the results of being open to hearing your feedback and he realizes that we live in animal bodies that want something different every single moment of the day sometimes the lightest of touch sometimes more fun and ravishy that just seems to work very well to help people have the kind of conversation they need because people are very quiet in the bedroom. The other thing that I help people with is, it's in the category of dirty talk, but I don't think it's really dirty talk. And that is, and that you can get, you can download this too. It's, it's a freebie. It's dirtytalkbook.com has this download, but it's basically all of the ways to add sensual conversation into the bedroom. Again, it goes back to the adoration and the encouragement. It goes back to noticing and um, talking about what you see or how it, things are making you feel. Dirty talk doesn't have to be demeaning. It doesn't have to be dirty at all. That's why I don't even like that phrase, but it's what kind of get, get things get lumped into that category. I really like the notion of um, another thing called sharing frames, which is a frame is like a snapshot of a moment of a, a lovemaking date that you had. And after you, after your lovemaking date, it could be any time with your partner, you can say, you know what my favorite part of yesterday was? No, tell me. Well, let me see if I can think of one that I really liked. Um, I really liked when I was on top of you and I was so excited to be with you again because you've been gone so much lately. And I was really noticing how I was able to give myself orgasms by being cowgirl on top of you. And I noticed how inside my vagina, it feels like I was able to position your penis in these different ways that was almost like there were these new places deep inside me that felt so good to be touched and stroked by your penis. And I loved the control I had over it. So I could get them in, like I could play with what spots were really good. And it was, it was like scratching an itch that had never been scratched. And it felt delicious. And I loved how much you were enjoying feeling me getting off on you with your member. And I felt really proud of myself because I just felt like I'd hit a new level of kind of like abandoned sexiness to my own pleasure. And I could tell how much you were getting off on it too. Mm. That's literally That's... an experience I had yesterday or two days oh. ago now. Wow. Yeah. Great. Well, you're giving us some good ideas, but I understand now. Yeah. Dirty talk is, is more talking and communicating and trying to figure out what you want. Cause it sounds like, Oh, I discovered a new thing and you were exploring yourself and then communicating that to your partner so that he or, or, or she, whoever's listening to knows yeah. what to do, because part of 
we have to explain, you know, we have to share with our partner what like what like and what we turn on. But if you don't know what you like, then it's kind of hard to communicate that. So I think I'm all about self-exploration and 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 then communicating that. So I, I really love that. I um I have another question though about yeah. menopause. Sure. Okay, because yeah. we are speaking yeah. to a group of women going through menopause. Sure. We have so many changes in our bodies and our minds, lots of hormonal fluctuations and maybe moodiness, changes in libido, the vaginal dryness, and maybe yeah. maybe even just life transitions, like be a death, divorce, caring for aging parents. All this can yeah. get a lot of stress oh, on us. Gosh, I know it's quite the time. The sand, we're the sandwich, the sandwich, the sandwich years generation. when we've got our ailing parents and our growing children and we're ch- <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, we can yeah. handle this. <laughs> so a lot of, yeah, you're right. Like, so like a lot of stuff can hit our sex life really hard. So why, why in general, do you think it's, it's important to nurture your sex life? Cause you had all these other things, you know, why put sex first? Well, I'm not sure you can put it first, but you, it can be right up there in the top. It can be in the <laughs> pantheon. Let's just, let's just put it that way. Um, well, I think part of it is that we just need the relaxation and the rebooting and the self-acceptance and the joyful co-creation and connection and intimacy. And without that, we feel adrift. We feel adrift from ourselves. We feel adrift from a partner. And if we're lucky enough to have a partner, it's worth trying to create that romantic, loving, exciting, sexy experience with them. It makes you feel like a teenager. Great sex and then is like new relationship energy. It it just keeps you just really happy with your partner, even when you're aging or you get hurt or your parents are failing or your kids are struggling or your job is challenging or what have you. It's like a it's like a safe island of love and pleasure to which you can escape all of the other challenges of life. Not only that, but of course, it's extremely healthy for you. In addition to the thing that I said earlier when we started, which was that it makes us look younger than all our peers. (laughs) (laughs) That literally is all I need. Oh, it makes you look 10 years younger. I'll do it. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. You got a big smile on your face when you have good sex and you do feel connected and just a smile alone will, will help. But I'm wondering, one thing that crossed my mind is that the first question that I asked you about doing sex like a man and, and you explained, you know, how women need it differently. I'm wondering then what about um, uh, two women, lesbian couples, do they need to shift or do they just just ahead of the game from <laughs> from, from from the rest? And they know exactly what they kind of need the same thing. So it kind of really works. Nobody's ahead of the game lesbian couples fall into lesbian bed death (laughs) um and 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 interestingly enough in the time of menopause as women are cresting from their 40s into their 50s it's the second greatest time for women to have same-sex partners in their And I think a part of that is that for many women, they've been so disillusioned with their male partners that they just don't want to deal with it anymore. And they they're drawn to an expansion of their connection and friendships and comfort with other women to start exploring being with same sex partners. A lot of women do it in their college years where they'll, you know, I had a threesome with a girl kind of thing, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or Mm -hmm. I kissed a girl and I liked it, you know, (laughs) (laughs) type of thing. But as you age and you become more confident, which the good news about menopause is that that testosterone to estrogen estrogen ratio switch of um, feeling a little more testosterone, a little stronger, a little more wise. It also makes you a little more courageous. And it also makes you open to trying new things that you may not have tried prior to this time in your life. So women still need a lot of help with technique, new relationship energy, keeping it exciting. Um, I don't remember if I've told you about the sex life bucket list ever. Have mm-hmm. I, ever t- have yeah. I mentioned that? Yes. Okay. So the oh, well, you didn't. You mentioned list. it to our group, but not not to us. So I've, I know yeah. what it is, but maybe the rest of the people who are listening don't know what it is. I recently put that together because one of the things that I also think really helps couples uh, uh, across the gender spectrum is not having like everybody thinks. Well, we should you know we should schedule sex. 
And it's like, no, that's too big an ask. I'm not going to put something down on my calendar for Thursday. I don't feel like doing right now. And, and then it feels like a chore. But erotic play dates sound like a whole different, fun, more interesting thing. And when you make a commitment to work on your sex life and to increase and enhance your sexuality and your sexual pleasure and your sensuality, and you think about, okay, well, let's learn something new together. Let's learn a new orgasm skill. Maybe we want to have an expanded orgasm practice, or maybe we want to do a lingerie photo shoot, or maybe we want to um, try a new toy together or whatever it might be. I put together 48 different ideas for any, any couples and even people who don't have a partner. There's many solo pleasuring ideas in the sex life bucket list. It's, um, it's a downloadable PDF that I don't keep your sex life bucket list. Don't worry. It's all private <laughs> for you. <laughs> but I love it when you email me and tell me what yours is. Because <laughs> it shows me what the trends are for different people and what they want. Like, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example that on the sex life bucket list, women tell me that they most want to learn how to orgasm from intercourse once they realize it, but they weren't broken and all they need to do is learn how. They want to learn how. Mm -hmm. And then the number two thing they want to experience is female ejaculation they're interested in it and they want to try it for themselves and they realize that all women can do it it's not pee and that it's actually a really incredibly awakening and sensual experience as long as you've got a good mat down on bed it's super <laughs> great um where men now these days they're interested in becoming multi-orgasmic men separating ejaculation from orgasm so they have unlimited stamina and can stamina and can last as long as their partners want them to and they're also interested in peace spot orgasms they are interested in you know having different kinds of orgasms in the same old way that they've been doing it so more and more people are becoming aware of things but couples come up with all kinds of fun th things they do together whether you're straight gay somewhere on the spectrum sapiosexual heteroflexual <laughs> <laughs> you know, heteroflexible whatever it might be um learning new things together creates new relationship energy and there's I've got 48 ideas you can start with. So, you know, if you run out, let me know. I have more. I always have more. <laughs> I, I think I joked to you about this. I, I said that if sex were a brand, its tagline would be sex. There's always something more. And it's my job to keep thinking stuff up for you so that you chew through it all. And you're like, okay, what do you have now? Uh, because there's always more to learn and more fun to have. And, and when you begin as a beginner together, you get that new relationship energy. Uh, desire is actually a, a balance between safety, security, trust, that piece of things, and adventure, fun, little danger, new ideas, things like that. And if you just have the trust and the safety, it's boring. That's the monotony of monogamy. If you just have the adventure, it's a little overwhelming and you're not, you don't feel safe and that puts the brakes on how you feel too. So that combination of the two things is a really nice, is a really nice way to approach your, your the expansion of your sexuality. And I'm going to have a, um, the, the uh, download, the links to these, everything that you've mentioned here too. So don't worry right. guys. I, I, uh, you, it, it, this kind of answers my next question, which was, do you think sex can get better with age? And I think it's pretty clear. Um, a yes, a big, big yes. And so much out there that we need to explore, but I want to ask you what, what's the difference in your opinion between sex and intimacy? Yeah. Well, sex is kind of a big bucket of here are techniques such as oral pleasuring sex positions, intercourse, erotic massage, kissing, etc. It can also include things like the 20 kinds of orgasms the human body can achieve. That's part of sex. Part of sex is my gender expression, my sexual expression. Um, part of sex is my, my knowledge of what is possible and my willingness to try new things. Um, these are a lot of the components of sexuality are those different aspects. What intimacy is, is different. You can have sex without any intimacy at all, but when you bring intimacy into sex, I believe it becomes much better. At least it's the kind of sex, the only kind of sex that I want to have. And intimacy is 
in part vulnerability, being willing to take the risk, feeling safe enough to take the risk to ask for something that might delight you. That's a big part of intimacy. Intimacy is shared pleasure and the joy of remembering that shared pleasure. Intimacy is that moment when the two of you become one, when time fades away, when it's just the interaction of the two of you co-creating and playing with each other and even touching source, touching God, touching Gaia, touching all the feeling of all living things. It can be an, an orgasmic expansion that the two of you create. Um, intimacy is shared memories of joy and pleasure. Intimacy is the appreciation for the growth that you see in yourself and your partner. Like the example of sharing the frame, the snapshot, the moment in time when I felt proud of myself for accomplishing a new level of sexual confidence and shared that with my husband. That's intimacy. Intimacy is that way that you hold each other's hands and you touch each other and look at each other when you're at a table with another couple and you know that they're not having that and you are. Intimacy is when it's the two of you against the world and nothing is ever going to shake that because you have a depth of love and connection and experience and experimentation and history together that whether you've just created that for a night or you've created that for decades, you have that intimacy. That's an unshakable feeling of connection to other. I love that. That yeah. definitely is on my list. <laughs> I think it does enhance sex much, much better. And I think you know, to me, I mean, I'm not a sex expert at whatsoever. I feel like, oh, I'm just learning how to do sex now at 52. But, yeah, good. Uh, but yeah, it's it. There's times where you want sex, and there's times where you want intimacy, and there's times where you kind of want both. And there's just so much fluidity, I think, out there. And I don't want to tell people what they should do or what what uh, is the best or whatever. I think we've been doing that long enough through what we've been learning all our lives by a man <laughs> that it's time to to explore yourself. So thank you for for making those differences. And how uh, how do you think is is it can you can you create this intimacy on your own? Do you need both to be on the same wavelength? Like how can you create that or does it just happen? Well, it's interesting because my partner is um, kind of on the Asperger spectrum. And so he's extremely subtle. He's highly mathematical. He's not terribly emotional at all. He has a very low emotional tone. And so you wonder, well, how would someone like me connect intimately with someone who is fairly unemotional? But I'll tell you something. I have We have no problem at all feeling deep and close and connected. And a part of it comes from honesty. We, both of us, so so one of the things that, um, one of the books that I, that I wrote that I think is maybe one of the foundations of relationship is a book called Relationship Magic. It's just a little workbook. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, but if you go to myrelationshipmagic.com, it's like $9.99 there. It's half the price. And it's a, a workbook that allows you to understand what your top four relationship values are. Because if your needs aren't getting met outside the bedroom, they can't get met inside the bedroom. And one of the one of my relationships, and my, my values and my husband's values are very different. He's in a relationship, he's in the relationship with me for different reasons than I am for him. I'm in it for security but also the freedom to go do what I want to do, sitting in the base of his safety. Um, but one, one, one thing that we share is a desire for complete honesty. And we learned that because um, a decade into our marriage, we almost got divorced because I wasn't enjoying sex. And I had been, you know, walking on eggshells, brushing things under the carpet, et cetera, et cetera. And that does not serve. Our society teaches us to be a bunch of liars, we lie about everything. <laughs> We're not true to ourselves. We forget what we even want. We're so busy trying to conform. And as you can realize, I'm kind of an anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> I am a non-conforming, non-binary, non-traditional person. I just don't want to conform. I want to live my own life the way I want to live my life. And the way I want to live my life and the way my husband wants to live his life with me is complete and total honesty. 
You don't have to be a jerk, to be honest. And honest, honestly, honesty is difficult more because you have to admit your own foibles and your own pettiness and your own greed and your own stuff. That's the hard part about being honest. But when you can be completely honest with each other, and I do this with my friends, I literally don't even hang out with people anymore that I can't just be totally honest with because mm -hmm. I don't want to live my life filtering my conversations and filtering my thoughts fit in or to appease or appeal anymore. And I think that when you hit your fifties, you're like, yeah, man, I don't want to do that either. You know, this is the, <laughs> you know, the, the moving into ourselves that is yeah. so great about being in midlife. And when you are completely honest, it, it begins to create a level of intimacy that you cannot have without that. I believe that on it, that honesty is the path to the deepest intimacy. When you allow yourself to be truly seen and truly known, and when you trust someone to see you and know you at that level, then you can begin to hit a level of body acceptance, personality acceptance, confidence that our society just doesn't set us up to have without that. Hmm. That's why we have you. Thank you oh. for, <laughs> for being the guiding light. So this is a great explanation. Mona, my question was then how to grow this intimacy. And you've answered that really well. I, the truth. yeah, let's move on to vaginal rejuvenation. I did a sure. podcast just on this topic itself. So if you want to take a deep dive on what that is, you can go listen to that. But what do you just, let's explain you from your opinion, what is vaginal rejuvenation and is it for everyone? particularly for women in midlife? Yeah. Um, well, as we age, we atrophy. And uh, so if we have wrinkled skin, essentially we're losing collagen and um, fluids in our body that begin to dry and desiccate our body. Just as when we're 40, we're bigger than we are when we're 50 or 60 or 70. Although the more muscle you can build and and the more strength you can maintain, the better off you'll be sailing into to old age. But we are shrinking. And we do have this darn planned obsolescence. And you have to fight against those things. And one of the things that happens is that our genitals atrophy and age as well. We have incontinence. We have loss of lubrication. We have sensation loss, orgasmic sensation loss. We have a more flaccid looking labia. Um, it starts to sag a little. So there's both visual types of things as well as felt types of things, um, as well as actual problems like my vagina tissue is thinning and it hurts to have sex. It's, the friction's painful, especially at the introidal sphincter, the opening to the vagina. Um, you know, there's just a lot of different things that can happen. And so what vaginal restoration or rejuvenation is essentially a series of things that you can do, depending on what problems you're dealing with, to reverse some of that aging. So it's kind of like, the, you know, if we go in and we get a facelift or we do fillers or we do Botox, we do facials, we do PRP. We do whatever, you know, to our face to kind of, you know, we put peptides on, we, um, you know, we, we do all these different things to kind of keep our faces looking young. Well, there's no difference between that and keeping our genitals feeling and looking young. And so the types of things, number one <clears throat> thing that happens is that we lose nitric oxide production capability. And so taking some, eating leafy green vegetables and beetroot, not using antibacterial mouthwash, not taking acid blockers or proton pump inhibitors helps prevent us from losing nitric oxide production, which squeezes the blood down into our pelvic bowl to allow us to lubricate because our vagina is not a gland. It's a muscle, a beautiful stretchy muscle, <clears throat> but it doesn't self-lubricate. So we have to have the blood flow. So blood flow, getting your body moving, eating your greens, and also potentially topping up with a nitric oxide supplement like a citrulline based one is the best for over 40, according to clinical data. So that's very important. And that's one of the supplements I make. Um, I have it right, I have it right here. Uh, one of the supplements I make is called Flow, F-L-O-W. It's made from organic fruit and vegetables, not made from 
pesticide laden corn liquor in a Chinese manufacturing facility. And um, I take a couple of these every night is when I take them. That's when your nitric oxide stores replenish. So um, the link for that for podcasts is buy flow now, B U Y. F-L-O-W-N-O-W, if you're interested in that. That's like the most basic thing you can do. Of course, there's hormone replacement. I love it. I do estrogen up inside my vagina. I do testosterone on my labia and clitoral tissue, as well as progesterone sublingually. So hormone replacement is certainly an excellent option in today's modern times. Why allow the planned, why not slow down the planned obsolescence? I like that. (laughs) And then there are at-home treatments you can do and there are external treatments you can do the at-home treatments are things like um, the v-fit um, the joy Lux product this is a vaginal rejuvenation device an at-home well, i need to charge it up the an at-home vaginal rejuvenation device it's called a, go to vagina device.com it's got red light therapy it has uh, so photobiomodulation that helps with the glycogen inside the vagina which is what keeps what feeds the good bacteria of our vagina. So if you're prone to that bacterial vaginosis or yeast overgrowths or things like that, red light therapy inside the vagina is very good. It helps thicken the vaginal, vaginal mucosa by stimulating mitochondrial growth that brings new tissue growth to the vagina as it thins. It also has warmth, which helps recollagenate the lining, and it has vibration, which helps with Kegel toning to reverse incontinence. This is primarily sold as an incontinence device, um, but it does all of those things, which is wonderful. You can do it at home, which is nice. And it's available in Europe as well as in the US and Canada. Do you just put, you sit that in your vagina for 10 minutes and then you're, you just read a book or something like what? what... I scroll Instagram and, and DM you. <laughs> That's what I do. Yes. <laughs> so when you're answering my messages, I know what you're doing. <laughs> You've got a vagina device inside me and I'm drinking my coffee and I'm DMing you. This is what I am doing. <laughs> so that's a rep- never, Now you need some unsee juice, right? You'll never forget. <laughs> you'll never forget that. <laughs> We're going to have some good jokes. Um, but that, so that's really cool. So then you do that once yeah. a day and it's just like a, that's yeah. a, just Every to rejuvenate the va- vagina. And like you said, to bring the blood flow and it bring, um, you know, so many great things actually. And, and that's actually and in for incontinence. It's another yes, very big, very big um, problem that that women through midlife may have. So it's not unusual. No like idea. you just yeah, hit all a lot of birds with one stone. Yes. So but what this? Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. What what this doesn't do is it doesn't reverse clitoral atrophy, mm. and it doesn't plump up the outer labia. So if they're saggy, it's not going to do anything for that. So what I like to do in addition is the Femi wave treatments, which is like Gaines wave. It's acoustic wave applied to the vulva, to the mons, to the labia, to the clitoral structure and the perineum. So all around the labia, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, all around the vulva from the outside, it sends these little waves inside and it stimulates new tissue growth, which plumps everything back up reconstitutes the erectile tissue structures it helps with super good with lubrication i i had some incremental lubrication from the vagina device it was great like if you're not too bad off but if you're super dry try the if try the femi waves now they're only available in the u.s right now they'll be coming to europe and to canada but you can also look up shock wave people with stores machines and and other devices people who do o shots or prp um, they can often administer this type of treatment to you too, because what I don't recommend are the CO2 and RF intravaginal lasers and radio frequency devices. They're too strong. They mm-hmm. burn you. They, they're too damaging. I don't like them. I'm a very sensitive person and I did not care for that at all. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was so glad when I found the vagina device and the Femi wave combination, because, um, I can tell you that, and and I've also had a lot of O shots, which is orgasm shots, PRP into the clitoral and urethral, which is, people call it your G-spot, but it's a long tube into the urethral structure. No, because they put a little lidocaine on there, so you can't even Mm -hmm. feel it. And it's a very tiny needle. It's nothing. It comes from your own blood. 
It's the growth factors from your own blood reinjected into that erectile tissue. And that really in, restores kind of the meatiness of your clitoris. And it fills up all that spongy tissue with growth factors, which allow you to kind of reconstitute that shrinking, drying, desiccating erectile tissue so that your orgasmic response returns bigger and better than ever. Hmm. It's like dialing back the clock 30 years when you do these types of treatments, especially when you, you do them together. Um, you know, you could start with a vagina device, see how you do. If you're making some progress, that's great. If you can add on the Femi wave, do it. And then the PRP is kind of the cherry on top. But I'm watching the PRP space, the O-shot space, because I actually think that exosomes might be, you know how there's exosomes and stem cells, which are kind of the higher level things now that we can do above PRP. I think that exosomes are where I'm most interested right now because they are available through placental and cord blood and things like that. So the labs that make them buy them from the hospitals and the, the mothers and fathers allow their, their tissue to be cultured by companies. And um, the exosomes are these signaling molecules. They're like, a, they're like a little signaling molecule that calls the stem cell to come and repair. So PRP initiates inflammation, which kickstarts healing. But I don't like the inflammation part because you actually have to go through a little wounding. I don't like things that are, hormesis is this thing where you wound to rebuild and make better. And I like that within a range, <laughs> but I feel like ultimately we'll look back at PRP as the first stage of our learning around vaginal rejuvenation and penile rejuvenation and that ultimately we'll start using exosomes instead because they're non-inflammatory but they call for the healing hmm. and i just you know school's still out for me but this this is the stuff i think about this is what i'm doing <laughs> over here in california as i'm like injecting stuff into my genitals for you guys so i can give you good advice because i don't think it's good to i mean i try everything i'm a sexual biohacker so that you don't have to be because i have definitely <laughs> been through some painful things and things that i thought were totally overpriced and things that i thought were totally unnecessary and more and more tools are happening for us now that we have access to and so my current my current favorites are a supplement a device and the femi wave mm. that's my current favorite things is that um, is that yeah. better than surgery because in the podcast i did before was it was just surgery and laser and and all this stuff is there is that so what you, the the devices and the and the supplement would that be as good yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like to cut into anything. It's nerve damage. I mean, I'm, you know, that facelift that I had in November, remember we were, I just saw you right after I got it and I'm still regrowing all the nerves where everything was cut. You know, I mean, you don't want to create nerve damage in your vulva. You want to grow new nerves without any damage. That's the goal. New nerves, new tissue, new sensation, reverse, you know, renewed sensation, renewed erectile function, um, plumpiness. So it, your vulva looks pretty, um, you know, all of those kinds of things. You don't need to cut anything. Now there are women who have very, very, very pronounced in long labia that get caught in their underwear that they can't bike ride you know they're, they're wow. just kind of like they want them trimmed off I don't know if it were me I'd roll them up like a little like a little <laughs> joint or something and stick them <laughs> up inside there so I didn't have to cut them I just I don't want to surgery my vulva I just don't mm. want to do it I don't I mean anytime I've ever cut anything on my body I've been like darn isn't there a better way surgery mm. feels barbaric to me I, you know, in my body, because I'm so sensitive, it just takes me forever to recover from that kind of stuff. I just feel it for so long. But the face so, looks good. You look awesome. Even when I saw you the day you. after, I would never have guessed. I don't know how much yeah. you suffered for that, but it, yeah, I wouldn't know, at least on the Zoom. Out. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, but I liked it. I was glad I did it. I think there's certain points. Oh, I wanted to tell you about something else. So I, I wore this shirt today for you because I wanted to show you something else too. You know, I'm always sharing my, nice my crazy can. things with you. Emma, I, I, you know, we had sun yesterday and I got out in the, in the sun a little bit. Um, so when I had COVID and I lost all my, I, let, I just emaciated. And all of a sudden this, this tissue here, 
was like super wrinkly, really bad. And right above my knees, those are like the first places that go on our, on our bodies. I tried everything. I've been slathering stuff on there. I've been working my biceps. I've been doing everything I can. I started, there's this new club in this like biohacking club in my town because I'm so lucky. I live in Mill Valley, California. And they have the Vasper machine mm -hmm. that is that high intensity interval training machine that does six intervals. You get on it, you do six intervals. It's like an hour workout in 20 minutes. I do it on top of my workout, but um, that with cryotherapy, I've been doing cryotherapy afterward and going into the cryo room. It's like a refrigerator. It's negative 124. And I go in for five minutes and it drops your body temperature like 30 or 40 degrees. And then I go get in this thing called the Novo Thor, which is kind of like one of those old um, um, suntan beds that has like the clamshell that you pull over, you lay down in it and you pull the clamshell over you. Mm -hmm. It's like that, but it's not, it doesn't give you a suntan. I didn't get this from the Novo Thor. It's, it's a full body red light therapy bed, top and bottom. And yes, I open my legs and get my <laughs> yoni in there too. <laughs> and within... I think I've been going there less than a month and oh my God, Zora, I can't believe it, but it's this wrinkly skin is going away. From Hallelujah. That. Red it's light the therapy. I think and the cryotherapy the, and the Vasper. I see. The Vasper does, it produces more growth hormone. I think if I had, if I had to guess the cryo and the red light are additive, but I'll bet it's the growth hormone, the endocrine cascade from doing the high intensity interval training. Mm. I bet it's that I bet it's the growth hormone and it gives you some testosterone, which you know, I love. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to let you know, I am solving my wrinkly arm thing. I may be able to wear sleeveless tops in public again. <laughs> I mean, these are the things we middle-aged yeah. women look for. You look fabulous, but you have not discovered katsu bands, have you? Well, that's the thing. The Vasper uses katsu. It uses mm, the blood flow it. restriction. And I saw your episode. I wasn't able to come on at the time of it, but I can't wait to listen to the podcast because I was going to tell you, I told my trainer, he's got to start doing katsu with me because this Vasper is incredible with its blood flow restriction with cold water pumped in. So it, yes. it holds even, it's even more blood flow restriction than the katsu you can do in your gym. Does it have a cycle mode? Because it goes, the, the katsu has a technique where it fills up with air for 30 seconds, yeah. then decreases yeah. for five, fills up with air 30 seconds. And that's sort of one of the keys to trying to get the growth hormone. And on the podcast was very interesting. They did tests I on- I can't wait to hear. Yeah, people who did, yeah, who did a, just sedentary, maybe a little, you know, typing. And, and then there were people doing mild exercise and then the people doing intense exercise. And the 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 difference- was relatively insignificant. So basically doing these bands and I do it every day. I just put them on my arms and legs, or, or not at the same time. You do one or the other and yeah. I'm on my computer or maybe I do some some yoga or maybe I take it to the gym. It's unbelievable. So you've got to, you can, yep. that's, that's the next, uh, I think the next thing you're going to biohack, you're, you're going to get on and you're going to love it. Love, love, love. I, I am. I'm, all, I'm on the mission to do it. I literally sent the link, the Katsu link to my trainer again. And I was like, we're doing this, figure yeah. it out. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Well, listen to the podcast. Yeah, you're on the right track as always. Zora. You're so smart and so amazing. And I love, I love and appreciate working with you so much. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful to hear. I'm going to open the mics now to people who've been so sure. patient and, and waiting to ask questions. And I would love to hear or comments or things you want to add on to really it's, it's up to you. So feel free to unmute if you like, and if you're too shy, that's okay. You can, you can um, type in the comments. Hey, how are you? Uh, is it me so hard that you've opened the mic? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, hi, Susan. Hi, friend. Hello. Um, very happy, very happy to to hear you and to see you. I, I've been following you uh, in some seminars here and there. So uh, when my friend Zora is a friend of mine, when she when I saw that she was interviewing you, I was ecstatic. Aww. Super happy that you were on her show. And oh yes, yes, I, I, I yes, I'm very. Uh, um yeah i would say um empowered 
uh, what you say. Mm. Um, I'm in, yeah, I'm in my mid fifties now, soon <laughs> next week, and um, I have a question for. I mean, you've answered pretty well actually, but um, about the yeah, the vagina, the lubrication, and the um. How you call it um, when it gets uh, Blacks, tight, not tighter. Um, you mentioned Loose? the word. No, no, no. Atrophy? When it gets um, small, atrophy. Atrophy. Sorry. Atrophy. Yes. Atrophy. You Thank you, Zora. Like when Corinne says it. A <laughs> yeah, atrophy. she says it better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> atrophy. Atrophy. And um, I mean, I know that I have. I mean, I had, my, I had one girl, and I had it by C-section. So I've never had uh, my baby, any baby, my any baby going through my uh, vagina. So mm -hmm. I, I know that, and also with empathy, I don't know. I don't have like a big vagina, I would say. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've always been told that I'm tight. I mean, mm -hmm. men, men likes it, but mm -hmm. it could be, it can give me some friction. And yeah. now with getting into perimenopause, I'm perimenopause. Mm -hmm. um, I'm... Uh, I'm concerned having uh, um, atrophy um, because I have no um, partner. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm a bit concerned of losing this atrophy. I, I don't know. It can take six months or one year to find someone. I mean, uh, so you talked about PRP, but it's nothing to do with atrophy. Um, I, I gather that. And um, so, Apart from the device uh, and the light, um, the red light therapy and things like this, what can I do to preserve? Because I'm, I definitely want to have uh, sex for as as long as I can in my life. Yeah. And no. I had I had issues in the past. I come from uh, yeah from um, dyspareunia. I don't know if you know dyspareunia. Yes. So that's been uh, yeah um, very much impacting in my relationship. And I do not want to, I don't want this to happen in, in, in a beautiful relationship I'm going to find as my ideal yeah. partner. So how can I save this? How can okay. I do? Well, you're going to love it, Corinne, because it's a super easy answer. First of all, I love that you're manifesting your lover. That's excellent. Yes, absolutely. When yeah, and, and here's some manifest, extra manifesting power for you. This is a manifesting lover wand. <laughs> it's a magic wand this is called the miss by bi which means two in german because this is made from fun factory this is the brand they're they're in bremen and they are one of the world class um pleasure toy manufacturers um there is a I don't think I have it here, but there is a lady by that's even bigger for the big girls like me, but this is a petite little toy. And what I love about this is that it has two motors in it. It has the motor that goes inside and it has the motor that goes outside on the pad on the clitoral face of your vulva, the vestibule area. And it's very tiny right here in the beginning, but it also has a bump to pleasure the G spot once it's fully inside you. This will tickle the up in the top, the roof of your vagina, and this will tickle the entrance to your vagina where your G spot is, and this will pleasure the clitoral shaft and tip. And so it's two motors. And what I like about this particular thing is that when you're using vibration, like series, like the, the, the vagina device vibrates a lot. But it's not a sex will help your body continue to improve your orgasmic response. It will connect the dots in your neural network between your vagina and your external clitoral structure because you're going to be stimulating them simultaneously. And so this is a part of what Zora mentioned early on when she said, yes, the link to the device is uh, just yes, sort of yes. Yes, just, just go link, to yeah. funfactory.com and you'll see Lady Buy, B-I, L-A-D-Y-B-I. Zoha can put in a link, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Zoha, yeah. 
Do you can put yeah. all the the, the two yeah. What's devices? it called? Yeah. Fun yeah. Fun Fact. No. Fun Factory. Fun Factory. Yeah. Dot yeah. com. Uh-huh. And that was called the Lady Buy, right? Um, Miss Buy. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Miss Buy. It's the tiny one. Miss Buy. Miss yeah. Buy. So what this will do is it'll start to connect the dots between your clitoris the clitoris that's sticking out and getting stimulated with the clitoris that goes deep inside, which is most of your clitoris, as well as the urethral sponge or G spot, which is the second erectile tissue system, as well as the perineal sponge, which is the third erectile tissue system on the base of your vagina. So your whole vagina is wrapped in erectile tissue. And what this is doing is it's telling the tip of the clitoris to send the signals into your body to awaken and engorge and bring the blood flow to all of the erectile systems because your whole vagina is wrapped in erectile tissue. So the two motor system helps wake everything up, bring the blood flow in, reverse the dryness and help with the laxity because if you feel like the tissue is thinning you're going to get more blood flow into the tissue the um best oils to use and now this is silicone this is a really high quality silicone so um it's very smooth it doesn't hurt your tissue and the tip of it if the opening to your vagina which is called the introidal sphincter it's a round muscle is sensitive just don't push it Just keep everything on the outside and run the vibration on the outer labia, the inner labia, the clitoral hood, Mm -hmm. the mons. You want to activate the whole outside as well as begin to stimulate and get the vagina to relax and open. And don't put it in until your vagina is like, now I want it in me. (laughs) Don't rush it. Let her listen yeah. to your yeah. yoni she knows what yes. she wants right yes. and then when you're solo pleasuring just relax don't force it start on the lowest setting i think it goes up five and then it has some patterns to it as well work your way up from one to two to three not in even a single day not in the beginning and then once you get to the patterns see if you can begin to f- Get yourself into an orgasmic state, like you're like, oh, I'm feeling really good right now, and put on one of those patterns, and the patterns will help you ride the patterns so that you begin can begin to take that moment of climax, and you can begin to stretch it out like ta- like pulling taffy, like time becomes you know taffy, like you're entering into another dimension, like the quantum dimension of orgasm, and you'll be able to start having more orgasms more easily, your wetness will start to come back, your blood flow will start to improve, the engorgement of all the erectile tissue will begin to get better, and then you will also be able to have more orgasms, and then they'll be able to be longer orgasms. And so then when you've manif- when this magic wand has manifested your lover, when they're inside you, you're going to be so used to having something inside you that's making you orgasm that you're going to be a lot more confident and comfortable. And you're going to be super turned on because you're going to be so turned on by your lover that you're going to be able to have orgasms from that too. That's basically Mm -hmm. orgasmic cross training is awakening all that tissue and kind of getting you going with the tool, the cross training tool. This is the katsu's for your clip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you say this is something I mean, you have to do every day or how often? Yeah, why not? Just leave every it day. on the bedside table and give yourself some <laughs> orgasms before you go to bed. If you wake up in the middle of the night, give yourself some orgasms. When you get up in the morning, give yourself some orgasms. If you feel a little horny, go in the bedroom and give yourself some orgasms. You can have Thing as many orgasms you do, as you like. You do. Yeah, well, I don't know. Every day. That... I mean, unless you do when you want to do how does it compare to so you this this device is way more bang for your buck than just reverse vaginal atrophy you gave an answer that was very comprehensive cross training vaginal cross training so but if it's just the vaginal atrophy that somebody's concerned about how does that compare to the uh an estrogen vaginal estrogen cream or something or gel oh i love vaginal estrogen cream i use it every day i mean why would that help that also on the um oh for sure on the the wall i would say you know the, the atrophy 
the estrogen. Yeah, that's what it does. And it, it also makes you less susceptible to bacterial overgrowth. Also makes you less susceptible to UTIs. So when you manifest that lover and you're having sex all the time, you're not going to get a bunch of UTIs. Yeah. So mm. yeah. 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 Mm. Estrogen cream is really, really, really good. And you also mentioned PRP. Where, yeah. which, which doctor would do a PRP in the vagina? Yeah, if you um, if you what go doctor? to um, O Shot Directory, Google the words O Shot Directory, you'll find the listing of all of the practitioners who do that. How do you, you spell O Shot? O S O S H O T. Dot com. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Does Does anybody have any other questions? I know we have to wrap up, and and Susan will have to go before we let her go. Love, Karine, is that okay? Hi. Is that is that and yeah, question? awesome. So happy. Thank you. Can I Thank say you. one more thing to Corrine, Zora? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you might want to do, Corrine, is do my 30-day orgasm challenge. Um, if you go to betterlover.com and you type in 30-day challenge, a video will come up which explains the 30-day challenge to you. Um, I highly recommend you do that because your comment was, oh, do I have to do this every day? And <sighs> what I do is I explain to you the benefit of doing it every day that you can, some days you don't want to, but every day that you can for 30 days so that you can actually see the effect. It's it's just like if you worked out once a week, you're not going to see the effect if you went mm. three times or mm. five times, you know, you just build back better, faster when you do it more often. And so the, I think you would enjoy watching my, I think my 30 day orgasm challenge video will motivate you to be like, all right, I'm doing it. I'm not even yeah. going to wear it. I'm just going to do it. So uh, <laughs> betterlover.com 30 day orgasm challenge. Check it out. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi there. I have a question. Um, sure. Two questions, actually. <clears throat> One of them is related to Miss Buy. I just looked it up online and there's Jules Miss Buy. And a regular Miss Buy. Is there a difference between the two that you know? I think it's just the color. I see. Okay, that's fine. The other question is related to uh, female ejaculation and yeah. squirting in in particular. Uh, so I've yes, I've heard you know the whole thing of we can definitely have it. Everybody can have it. Can everybody have squirting or can? Is it that everybody can have ejaculation? It could be squirting or it just could be water or, you know, that liquid um, discretion. And um, not being able to have uh, squirting, like, you know, I've tried multiple things and I would love to have it and, and experience that. So any pointers there would be really helpful. Sure. Um, so... Squirting is just another, is the porn term for female ejaculation. Okay. And um, the fluid is not urine, but it comes through the urethral canal. So just as a man ejaculates and urinates through his penis, the urethral canal runs out his penis. We ejaculate and urinate through our urethral canal, which comes out if you open up the inner labia, that's called the vestibule. And inside the vestibule, that's where your urine comes out below the clitoris and above the vaginal opening, your urine comes out there and there's a spongy tube that's wrapped around the urethral canal. I'll show you the pictures. Hang on. Oh, guys, if you're listening now, go to the YouTube video <laughs> and yeah, you're going to exactly. have, I hope uh, yeah, YouTube doesn't like ban me or something. I just have to make sure I, I have a, a, yeah, I tick the box that it's for 18 and over. <laughs> So, so Zora, what is that YouTube video you're referring to? Is it, no, I'm going to, this will also be a, a YouTube video in, oh, got in it. addition to the podcast. So the listeners of the podcast don't get the visual. So I'm directing them to the pod, to the YouTube that will come out uh, as soon as, as possible. Got it. And it's hack my, hack my age on YouTube. Hack my age on YouTube. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, this is your vulva, the front of your female genital system, the the opening, the vestibule is what's inside the inner labia. This is the tip of the clitoris. This is the where the urine comes out and the ejaculate. And then this is your vaginal opening or introidal sphincter. If I pull the skin off, this is what it looks like underneath there. These are your three erectile tissue systems. This is the clitoris, the tip, the shaft, the arms, and the legs. The legs go underneath your outer labia, underneath the pubic hair in your outer labia. This is 
that little rosebud that's around the exit inside the vestibule where the urine and the ejaculate come out that goes up like this. It's a spongy tube. And this is the perineal sponge that's underneath. So here's all the erectile tissue systems wrapped around your vagina, which is why that miss by is so good because it touches here and goes inside simultaneously. So you're kind of getting this whole thing plumped up with blood flow. So this sponge right here looks like this. This is the tube. It's one of your three erectile tissue systems. And what it does is this is where the pee, pee comes out and where the ejaculate comes out. And that's the face, that little rosebud. You can touch that thing. It feels good if you put a vibrator or a finger on it too. And this tissue is spongy around it. And these green things that you see, these little spider veins, these are called the skein's glands. Just as the fluid comes into your pelvic bowl and runs through the lining of your vagina to give you lubrication, the blood plasma flows into this spongy tissue. And when you have an orgasmic contraction, fluid can be expelled. The fluid is not urine. It is a prostatic type of fluid, similar to what the prostate gland makes in a male body that mixes with the sperm from his testicles it's mixed together and then when he ejaculates he's got his semen which has the sperm and the fluid we have a fluid that comes out of us that it's a more watery and um same as when a man ejaculates it and his semen comes out he's not urinating there's a muscle that closes that knows the difference between ejaculation and urination. It's the same for our body. We have a muscle that knows when we ejaculate, when we urinate. So we're not urinating. There's no, if when some people say there's urine in the ejaculate, there might be tiny little traces in the urethral canal, tiny little traces, but nothing. And so all women can release what I like to call our feminine waters, our divine nectar. And when you first kind of learn how to relax and birth that type of orgasmic pleasure and let go and let that fluid come out, when you first learn how, you're only going to get a little wetness. You're going to be like, oh, I think I felt a little wetness. Ooh. And then over time, as you learn to let go and let go and let go, and you must feel comfortable and you have to get the stimulation you need. Those two things have to be present. Women don't release their waters typically if they're not super comfortable you've got to be on a mat so you're not going to get anything wet you know you have to just be feeling really good about letting go it's a letting go it's a pushing out and when you let go at first it might be a little wet then there might be like what feels like a little spring you know how when water erupts out of the ground and it just kind of seeps out of the ground it might feel like that. And then over time, you might learn to let a little bit more go and you might get a little, you know, like a little dribble that runs down your butt cheeks and onto the bed. And then, then from there, you might be able to get a little bit more to come out and a little, poof, a little, a little poof will just come out. And over time, you can sometimes get into a, a state of trust and turn on that allows you to just let a lot of fluid go. Like it could be a cup. It could be a pint. It could be a quart that you let go through six, six, um, successive, um, you know, allowing yourself to release. Um, so it can be, you could end up in a little puddle at the end. So these are just, this is just letting your body learn how to do what it automatically knows how to do and just allowing it and feeling the joy and feeling the release and feeling the pleasure. And the ejaculation and the orgasm are actually separate systems. So you might ejaculate and it doesn't really feel like the same thing as the orgasm you had from touching your clitoris, but it feels just as good in a different way. It's just a different kind of orgasm, the same as a core gasm or a throat gasm or a foot gasm or a nipple gasm. They generate orgasmic ecstasy from a different type of stimulation. That's why there's 20 kinds of orgasms. So um, I recommend that you go to female liquid orgasm.com. There are a number of books about what it is, how to do it, et cetera, as well as a program that you can purchase. That is um, something that I've had with Tallulah Sulis for 
almost a decade and we've taught thousands and thousands and thousands of women and their partners. And it teaches you how to do it solo pleasuring as well as with your partner, with toys and with fingers. So you could literally get on the bed and touch your own G area and make yourself ejaculate with just your fingers. You can use tools, which I also have a G-spot guide. It's called, it's at gspotjoy.com, G-S-P-O-T-J-O-Y.com. And in that, it helps you learn what tools are available, what I recommend, and then it comes with an explicit video. You have to opt you have to opt in and you have to click to know that you're going to the video, but I recorded a video of the tools themselves being used on the vulva so that you could see how to do it because it's very delicate in there, but it needs a lot of pressure. And so when you aren't the person delivering the sensation, you have to be very careful not to hurt the woman. And so none of the manufacturers make an instructional video. There's no instructional video, even on pornography. It's all just women just having these giant squirts, you know, like, like Olympic champions <laughs> or whatever. And it's not how much fluid comes out. It's how pleasurable it is for you. But I can tell you that it is one of the most pleasurable experiences that I have in my sex life. I don't do it on command. I'm always pleasantly surprised when it happens. And sometimes I'm in the mood for it. And sometimes it's not of interest to me at all. But it's one of those things that really is a divine nectar and a, a very profoundly deep, intimate experience with yourself or a partner. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I love the instructional oh. video part. <laughs> like that's, yeah, I think sometimes we need this. So you did yeah. mention this is this is something that just happens by surprise. You can't control it on command. I mean, you can, I mean, you can. You can be like, okay, I'm in the mood to squirt, and you can, you know, maybe you're with your partner, your husband, or something, or and you can be like, let's have a squirting session, and you get out your tools, and you, you know, you get some good orgasms going, and you get really relaxed, and he, he knows just what to do, and he's using the tools just right, and you're just pushing out, and you are squirting. You've hydrated beforehand, you know, you got to have hydration. It's it's fluid in your body. You got to keep your body topped up. Uh, so drink, drink some electrolyte or some coconut water, you know, and you can have the intention of squirting and do it. I don't mm. usually go to that level. Every once in a while, I'll be like, yeah, I want to have a G-spot session. Let's do it. Um, but generally, I'm always surprised. I'm like, oh, oh, I just squirted. Did you feel that? And, and my partner's like, yeah, that was exciting. Oh, I love that, you know, and, and they love it too. It's so exciting for them. So sometimes it's just a surprise. Other times I'm going for it. Hmm. So. Uh oh, I think we lost Laura. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yes. Yes. I lost you for a second. So cool. This is amazing. Are there any other questions before we let Susan go? What going? You mentioned um, three things that you would do for um, atrophy or vagina restoration. Yeah. Um, and I didn't catch all of them in the session. What were the two, the three major things that, that you're recommending right now? Yeah, um, I'd start with flow with a nitric oxide <clears throat> supplement. The second thing that I would consider would be the vagina device. And the third thing that I would recommend would be the Femi Wave. Um, the the O shots are are good, but they're inflammatory, and I'm not in love with them like I used to be. I'm not in love with the inflammatory stuff in the way that I used to be. Um, and then I would recommend a 30 day orgasm challenge with a tool like the Lady Buy or the Miss the Miss Buy Miss Buy if you're tiny inside, Lady Buy if you're voluminous like I am. <laughs> <laughs> the world's largest vagina <laughs> you were born for as work. i age too <laughs> <laughs> where can someone find the uh, buy that that femi wave device is it just femi wave.com fem wave or femi wave uh femi wave.com is um the uh, acoustic wave technology the yeah. vagina device is at vagina device.com this yeah. is at vagina device.com it's actually yeah that's the actual name of the vagina dice is called vagina device.com yeah vagina so, it's uh v fit joy lux it's a little confusing so i just have it 
vagina device so you can remember it. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to remember. Got it. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and I but, will try. Hey, let me know how you do or if you get stuck anywhere. You can always email me. So yes, uh, anything we, you opted into of all the stuff that I laid out, you'll be end up on my email newsletter. You can unsubscribe anytime. But if you reply to any email you get from me, they go into my inbox. I have a care team that's been with me for a decade that handles how do I log into my female liquid orgasm program and stuff like that. But if you have questions, I handle them. So you'll hear back from well, me. The question that comes to me right now, if the... To prepare for this, would you start doing these things now before symptoms have started? I I would use the um the toys and just masturbate a lot. That's what's going to help you have mm. more orgasms and keep everything juicy. Just masturbate a lot. Okay, and then those things you would start once you have symptoms. I mean, you know, you, by the time the... you're in your fifties, you're you're gonna. Mm start to experience some atrophy. So I would probably start with the vagina device and the, I would actually just start with nitric oxide. It's like the simplest thing you can do. And it makes you think better. It's good for your heart. I mean, it's a vascular support strategy. So you're, you're just going to, you're going to work out better. You're going to think better. You're just going to have better blood flow everywhere. You're not going to get edema. Your rings aren't going to get stuck on your fingers. Your ankles aren't going to swell. <clears throat> Because you're getting good blood flow because you've got enough nitric oxide to pump the blood around your body, including to your pelvic bowl when you're making love. So, I mean, that's ground zero. Eat your vegetables is ground is is the floor, and then the the mm -hmm. uh, top up your system with the with the supplement. Then masturbate frequently. Then look at maybe the vagina device. Then look at things like the femi wave for you know even more new tissue growth and stimulation. Awesome. That's really helpful. Thanks. Sure. My pleasure. And like the, the progressive, yeah, approach where you try, you know, from the low hanging fruit and then just keep Excellent. adding on if you need, you may not need yeah. it as it is. So, so, uh, and if you practice all these great techniques, um, maybe by the time you get to 50, you really won't be there and you can push it to 60 or who knows. Yeah. Great. Well, Susan, thank you so much for your time. You Loads of time you gave us and yeah, answered. It is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and such great questions. Thank you everybody who, who contributed and asked your questions and gave your feedback. Really, really lovely. I will have all, as many links as I possibly can in the show notes. We're going to have a, a ton, but if you get lost, if you haven't seen it, just reach out to Susan. I will definitely yeah. have her email and her social media contacts to in her website as well. You can reach out there as well and sign up to the newsletter. Then, you know, you got direct access. So take Perfect. care. Thank you so much. Any last words for a woman going through menopause, Susan? No, just thank you so much for having me. And I'm always here if you need me. Thanks, Zora. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.